the night of, that both of them were murdered, your father and your son, and you went to the church service, the prayer vigil. And I'll just tell you, when I heard that you did that, so I was leading church service. Uh, I think you did it after, maybe after I'd been at your house. But uh, when I heard about this, I'm like, I would never have had you do that. <laughs> and yet, you know, somehow God did want you to do that. And and you went in that moment, and that was one more piece of a, you know, a direction that you were receiving in terms of how you were going to make it through this. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so, so you walked into my mom and dad's home, and it was almost like this small person inside of me leapt out, and I said, and, and said to me, "You have to tell him. You have to tell him," because I was so fearful that I had heard God speak to me. I thought I've gone crazy. Like this has happened, and now I'm, I'm, I'm a crazy person, and how am I going to get through this? And now I'm hearing voices. And so we had our conversation and you said, keep listening, which was not what I wanted to hear. I wanted you to fix everything. I wanted you to miraculously say it didn't happen. It will be fine. And you of course didn't say that. You said, I'm so sorry. And you said, keep listening. And as we were walking downstairs, there were more people. If you remember, there was just this mm-hmm. crowd of people in her, um, in her living space. And someone said there's going to be a student vigil. And to me, the word student was so key because all of a sudden I was back at Kyle's death and it had impacted me so greatly at age 16. And now we're talking about, I was thinking about the 14 year old freshman that Reet was and the 14 year old friends that he had and the horrible impact that this was going to have on their lives. And I thought of them and I, and, and my heart said, this little thing inside said, you have to be there. 